Hey, this is Louis D. Fresh, bringing it to you on a Wednesday. This will air this particular Sunday, which is, I believe, the 20th, the 20th of February, 2022. Uh, we're going to be talking about today, again, like last time with the fish segment, we talked about, last time we talked about a um, sort of an overview of a uh, fish food. And as I told you last time in our fish segment, we, I said I would mention uh, an overview of fish illnesses. Again, we'll get more detailed and blah, blah, blah. And, you know. But I wanted to give an overview. And, and, and as I was thinking about this, because I do think about this before I actually, um, I don't write anything down. Uh, this is the teacher in me coming out. Well, I just start talking. But I was thinking about it. And I said, um, in general, with both college segment and fish segment, it is amazing how much I have learned in the last, um, I guess I started this around uh, around when the pandemic was going on and you know, or still going on. Um, I guess in August or 2020 or something like that. Uh, and I have, I have learned so much. And uh, I thought I knew college. I thought I knew fish. Apparently I didn't. So I wanted to share you oh, towards the end of this little video the things that I really didn't know about fish illnesses. Again, just an overview. Not so much cures or whatever else. Or whatever. And again, this is just fresh water. Even though a couple of these uh, uh, illnesses or diseases can be found in, um, in saltwater fish. Again, here we have a helicopter view of uh, fish, freshwater uh, fish diseases. Because just because of their fish kind of thing, well, they don't they don't get sick. They get sick just like a, any organism. Um, they they are susceptible to to illness, and so uh, it's something you should be aware of. And again, we'll be more detailed. We may do this versus this or whatever, but um, I don't know. I just felt like doing this because uh, just to give you a heads up on what's out there. We're doing uh, seven categories of fish illnesses. One here is parasites. Parasites um, are kind of interesting. This I didn't know at all, that all fish have a low level of parasites. I, I didn't realize that they all had some type of parasites. But what creates the the, the replication, as it were, is usually when they're, they're transported, whether it be from wherever they're coming from to a pet store or a fish store, or they're being transported from your, the fish store to your house. Uh, when they get captured uh, and transported, and that's the word captured, they really do. They get into a net and they're transported, their immune system weakens and parasites replicate, such as my little friend over here. And so that's what causes the difficulties. And so, um, you know, that's why when they say you should float your fish, you know, so they can get used to the to the climate and, you know, in, in your fish tank and all that. And, you know, and fish, many, many, many fish get delivered through the mail. Give them some time because, um, these fish really do go through a lot before they go to that forever home. Second type here is we have bacteria. This one is is rather, this one I did know because they, it, it kind of is brought on by stress. And stress can be just about anything, fluctuations in temperature, uh, like I said, bringing home the fish, uh, addition, additional fish being brought in, um, one fish exerting dominance over another. That's why you need to do your research. Uh, you may mix by mistake because you didn't do your research or or sometimes it's just the characteristic of the fish One may be uh, more of an aggressor more of an alpha fish I know it sounds funny, but it's but it's true and the stressors can include poor water quality overcrowding and or inappropriate diet Like I mentioned last time in our food uh, segment uh, Which was last video um, you just can't feed your fish you have to know what kind of fish you have and what kind of food they need so things such as this do not happen to your fish third type uh fungal disease before i even mention it uh these are this is a discus and i know discus are really really susceptible to to fungus and they whatever color they may be they will turn darker like that and that's your first inkling that they will be getting fungus and uh, it, it really becomes quite a hassle so that's found on the dead skin this is a ram here a german ram you'll see that they found on the dead skin sort of the outer the the epidermis as it were of the of the fish and they are found on fish with compromised immune system due to viruses and or genetics yes they do have genes and yes there may be that that may run in their lineage so sometimes you really can't help it so but fungal disease is something that that is that can be definitely found on fish and it and is quite obvious as you can see here almost like white patchy um stuff you like that white patchy stuff good uh good analogy there anyway the fourth cat type is troy laughs at me where's troy
Oh, no, he's sleeping. Sorry, bad, bad. Uh, the lymphocytis. Uh, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, so I'm not going to try it again. Uh, that's like, because I asked my wife just to, because sometimes you get so bombarded with stuff that you forget the obvious. Um, COVID-19 is indeed a virus. I was like, is it a virus? So I asked her just to triple check. And uh, you'll notice that the virus there you will will, will uh, form as such, like on, a, on different areas of the skin. You'll notice here even on the gills, which will cause a difficulty breathing. And you again, we're not talking about what to do, or what not to do, but we're just so you can spot it, so you can see it, and you can see the virus, or it could be here. And you can tell this is just the onset here because his fins are still uh, very, uh, very uh, open. That's the word I'm looking for. So fish do indeed get viruses. As I was saying, with all this research stuff, um, I've learned so much, so much stuff. Uh, I, I can't lie because, you, you know, it's funny because you think, oh, I know this. I know this. What are you talking about? And, um, it's it's phenomenal things I'm learning because I didn't I had no clue about this gas bubble disease. And these very fine micro bubbles in the water, sometimes after a water change, you'll see like little bubbles, these little, little bubbles coming up there and they will attach to the fish and they will almost create uh, an illness you see there uh, that's a little bit more extreme uh, and then you see here on the zebra Daniel you see the uh, the extreme so you really need to be careful about you, you know if you have um, a bubbler you know that, that you really try to uh, make sure that it, that it really doesn't catch on to the fish so these gas bubbles these very fine you see look at you see these very fine bubbles do not attach to the fish and create a disease more uh, thing that I knew and I know about these these uh, sort of growths that uh, that take I'll talk, I'll take more about that in a second these growths on a fish but I did not know that they were uh, a cause of cancer and I did not know truthfully that cancer can be can be in a fish because I do know that unfortunately I do know that a, a dog can get it because one of our dogs Callie died of cancer and I was like oh wow and so but I did not know that it, that cancer can be in a fish and abnormal growth outside or inside of the fish there you go um, and you'll see a decrease in appetite and increased fatigue. And you'll see this gentleman, I think it's a gentleman, um, he's actually operating or getting, or for lack of a better word, get, operating on this fish to get rid of that growth. And I did not know that you could do that in order to get rid of the cancer to try to save the fish. And last but not least, I did know about this as well, but I did not know that, uh, that it, it was a result of the kidneys, polycystic kidney disease. Because many years ago when I was a, when I was a little boy, um, must have been 12, 13. My dad had some goldfish, some feeder goldfish that he grew out like this. Uh, they do get big, and, and I think I'm going to talk about that when I visit the fish farm today. Um, and we're going to do, a, I'm going to shoot a video there for, for next time. Um, I already asked, so they said yes. And uh, you'll notice here that there's inflammation, and it's primarily in goldfish. And the cysts form, cysts, because that's a cyst, they'll form in the kidney to prevent the kidneys from working properly and it will grow as that. And it does not just for vessels that are primarily goldfish, but they will grow and also in other fish such as the Oscar. You'll see there that, that growth and you'll see our, our beta fish here, the, 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 ex, the expansion of the body there. And you'll see the poly, polycystic kidney disease. So there, there you go. Those are seven types of illnesses. And like I said, the last three, um, they, they were, I, I kind of knew, except for that gas bubble disease. I really didn't know that about that at all. But uh, it really is good to, to learn and to, and to expand your mind on what these things are all about. Because that, that's really what this channel is really all about. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I don't make a lot of money on this, <laughs> on these videos at all. Uh, I probably lose money more than anything else. But uh, the reality is I enjoy I enjoy uh, serving you. I enjoy giving you these details about fish, about colleges and research. And I hope I encourage you to do the same uh, in your in your search for college and your search for freshwater fish. And that's really what I got. And I really that's what I really hope um, for, for all of you that you will just not be satisfied with what you know, but constantly learn more and more. And I'll leave you with this little quote. I think I've said it before. Maybe I haven't. Uh, and I really like the quote, the sign of an educated person is realizing how ignorant you are. This is Louis D. Fresh.